I'm Susie Barwick, Chairman of the National Education Committee. And today, welcome to our virtual show and this little tutorial where we're going to create a design that you can um, hang on the wall in the kitchen, the spare bedroom, and hopefully replace the flowers whenever you need to. I have uh, photographed a, a basic list of uh, ingredients, if you like, um, which will come at the end of this video. Um, but we're going to start with our background, which I'm using a piece of uh, offcut of an insulation board that I've cut into a round shape. You can make it any shape you like, um, but I've chosen to do a round one. And if you're going to do a round one, you will need to um, perhaps use something like two floral rings, the metal rings, one smaller than the other. So you create your shape with the smaller one and then use the other one as a template um, for the piece of paper that you're going to cover it in. Um, because you will then draw around your shape and round your template. And then you've got to cut in to the point where you've drawn the first line a series of little frills. This is so that we can create a really nice neat edge when we start to cover the board. And what we do, bring our little frills up and you overlap them. And this will make a really nice neat edge on um, the side of the board. So have your sellotape to hand and you just literally take that down. And then when you've done that side, always a good idea when you're working in the round to pretend you were using a clock. So I've done six o'clock, now I'm going to go to um, 12 o'clock and do exactly the same thing. So I'm putting it nice and taut so I know that the paper's not ruched underneath and I'm still getting a nice neat edge and sellotape. And you would proceed then perhaps to nine o'clock and three o'clock and then fill in your gaps. Um, I have, in fact, uh, used this separate coloured paper so it's easy to show you um, what I was doing, but I covered mine in a nice plain sheet of cream. And then we're going to take our board and take a piece of aluminium wire, which is lovely and soft, decorative wire, and you cut a piece that is just a little bit um, doubled over, a little, little bit wider than the shape that you've made. Because what we're going to do with this wire is we're going to feed it in, in in a line. But first of all, you have to establish where that line is going to be. And this is where your plant material is going to go. So you take your tube and you measure so that the tube is towards the bottom of the board, leaving space for your plant material later. And you take the two points coming in a little way on either side so that you've got a margin so that you can see the shape all around what will be your mechanic. So measure in equidistant from either side and the right depth for your tubes and draw a little light pencil line across and put a little mark where you want to put your wire through. Then you take your braddle, you can use a kebab stick, and you gently push a nice hole through to the other side. Now when you're using a bradle or anything like that do make sure that you have some uh, stack of old papers or magazines so you don't damage the surface underneath and certainly don't do it against your hand. Um, so that's we've measured our wire, we've made our little holes, we know where we're going to put our material. So the next thing we have to do is select and get our materials together and prepare our wire. Now, what we're going to do, you've got your two points here. You need to leave enough on either side so that you're going to be able to go through and go round to the back to tie it. And you're going to just um, mark out where that is and make a neat right angle bend on one side of the wire so that you get a nice neat right angle. That will also help you when you're threading to have a stopping point. Um, then you're, you're ready to start your threading. Now you can use, I've used leaves, uh, but you can use anything at all. Dig out all the stuff from your flower stores. A nice idea if you've already covered in uh, 
paper or wallpaper is to tear little strips with a ruler and the only rule is that those strips must be as wide and as long at least as your test tube because they're going to hang in a line and it's got to stay nice and neat against the board. As I said you can put felt, ribbon, any kind of material but I've used leaves. Whatever you do do make sure you have some nice contrast. Contrast of texture, contrast of colour. So something soft, something shiny, something frilly, something plain and so it will go on. Um, once you're ready with your wire, which you have cut, I have to tell you, at an angle so that you have a nice sharp point, you can then start to thread um, your leaves on and just push the wire through, make a little hole. If you have a leaf like I have here that has a, a definitively different back to front, then always put it on the wire facing in the same direction so that you get a uniformity when you're threading. Um, don't try and make it so precise that you always do this leaf followed by that leaf or whatever it is because you want to get a certain randomness in there which helps with the rhythm and movement of the whole design. If you happen to have material that doesn't lend itself to having a hole then what you can do is to make a little wire hanging for it and we're going to lay the wire along the stem and then wind around and wind over where you've laid it to hold that wire in wind all the way up nice and neat if you can leave a little bit at the end using your wire cutters cut off a couple of inches and now you have a little hook that you can hang over your aluminium wire. So we, we, we thread all our things on and when you think you've got to the point where you have enough to fill that space between those two points, that is the time, don't worry about your test tubes at the moment, that is the time that you will take your finished piece, this is just a little sample I have here, and you will lay it onto your board uh, and have a little look at it. Don't fuss too much now with trying to tidy it up because you're going to mess it up in a minute because this is the point where you decide where you're going to put your test tubes. So you take your test tubes and you, you lay them out in amongst your materials in a way that is pleasing to you. You probably only need three, four, five depending on the size of your background. Um, and then you're going to place them in and when you know that you're happy with where that's going to be you're going to attach them to the wire. Now I have covered this test tube with uh, Stemtex and what I did was I just got a little bit of double sided tape then I took the Stemtex and you peel off the tape just so that you've got something to make sure it stays at the top and then it's just a matter of winding it all the way down. I'm not going to do it all for you now. And then getting to the bottom, you've got another piece of double-sided tape that will just make sure you get a nice tidy bottom and then come all the way back up again. And then you're ready to make your wire um, fitting. And that is to go about halfway with your thumb, hold it there, pull it round, twist it over and then turn the tube a few times and you're ready to fasten your tube onto your aluminium wire. So back to that, got your two ends, one on either side of the wire and again just a nice right angle twist and then twist it round a few times. Do it quite a few times because what that will mean is that you will have um, some flexibility on where you want your tube to be when you've laid it out. So now your tubes and your leaves are all ready to go. So the next thing we have to do is to, with the, you, they will be on your wire like this. I, I'm going to keep it plain so you can see. So you remember that right angle. So we're going to go through the hole that you've made very carefully and you pull it down and pull it through. But what you really, really do need to do is to make sure that you have left about an inch. Well, actually what it is really is the width of your tube. So that's going to stay on that side. So don't pull it tight like that, but leave that gap.
Then on this side, you just make a little bend like that so that you know that that's flat against the board, but you've still got your, your little raised area here. And you'll put your, uh, your design will be falling in here now. And then on the other end, you'll make a right angle and you'll feed your wire through in the same way and fasten it in the same way. And that will make sure that the tubes are not going to splay up or splay out because you haven't pulled them in too tight. Once you've managed to get that through on the back, then just gently twist the aluminium wires together for the moment and lay them flat. And then you can put your, your mechanic back down and you, so that you can continue to work on it. And then it's time to put your flowers and everything else in. And what I've done, and it's a little tip that you might like, is I like to use a smaller tube than the one I've got. That way I can easily take that out to fill it up with water if I need to. And also when the flowers are dead and these need a good old clean out before you put new stuff in, you can just give them a wash and then pop them back in. But of course, as these are wired onto your design, it doesn't really matter if um, you just have to undo them and wash them out and put them back, but you, you might destroy your covering a bit doing it that way. So that's your special tip for the day, two tubes. This is an anthurium tube and that is an orchid tube. If you know a demonstrator, they've usually got quite a few. Right, so we'll move on now and I'll just talk you through how you're going to put your plant material in. So I've chosen here a little, tete-a-tete uh, -tete narcissi because they're going to be nicely in scale with my design. They're not too big, they're not too small and of course that lovely bright yellow has a real luminosity which will jump out at you so they've got plenty of impact. I've kept it simple by just using one kind of flower and I've tried to dance them up and down to create some rhythm. I've also used uh, some of this cryptomeria that I've got hanging down here coming up into the design and that creates a unity. I've got some Arum Pictum Marmoratum or whatever, it's always changing its name, leaves and, um, and I've just taken a little piece of curly willow and using some twine I've just tied it to one end of the aluminium wire and then I've used that twine to create some more movement by just tying it in various points on the design and there you have a finished piece a lovely little spring moment and I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that you will go and try it out for yourself goodbye